Hey everyone, this is Wanda Alger and today is Tuesday, October 3. Alerts, threats, dangers ahead. This is a daily occurrence anymore, isn't it? On social media and news. Uh, this is Tuesday, October 3. We're told that tomorrow, October 4, there's a FEMA alert going out at 2.20 Eastern time. I've been getting emails and messages. What do we do? Uh, is this real uh, or not in terms of the potential threat uh, of those who got a particular shot, something could be triggered and it could be really dangerous. This is but one of many different kinds of alerts and threats that the enemy has been sending and, and will continue to send. And I realize that, uh, you know, many of you are going to be watching this after October 4. Uh, so I'm not just going to be talking about October 4, but we need to talk about how are we going to deal with these ongoing threats and alerts and everything that the enemy is bombarding us with in a way that we are on the offense and not the defense. I am tired of always feeling like I have to react to the devil. I have to respond to what he's doing. He should be afraid of us. He should be threatened by what we're doing. We are on the offense. And this is what I want to talk about. The enemy's tactics have always been the same. The enemy wants to draw us into fear. God wants to draw us into faith. And I'm going to talk about faith in a very practical way in this video. We've got to talk about what it looks like because even as I've gotten emails asking, you know, what should we do about this possible uh, uh, presidential alert? Should we turn off our phones, put them in a Faraday cage, put them in our microwave, walk away from any kind of tower that's close by? Uh, well, here's the bottom line. This And this is my take on it, okay? I have not gotten any prophetic intel. The Lord has not shown me anything, which I'm going to be telling you about. That in itself says something to me, okay? How I respond is going to be according to the faith that God has given me and my track record with him. How you respond may be a little different. And believe it or not, that's what God is looking for. He is looking for us to activate our faith in all of these things. At this point, perhaps you have realized that no matter how much information we try to amass concerning the works of darkness, the enemies of the scheme, uh, or the, you know, the, the schemes of the enemy, there's a point where we can't we can't understand it all. There's no way to find out all the information and facts. We have to be careful that we don't give into this lie that if I just have all the right information, if I just have all the facts, then I'll be safe. The Lord wants our faith to be placed and fixed firmly in him. Yes, we need information. We have been in an information war. It is a psychological warfare on what we believe, what, what information we believe. Uh, and we need to do our research. We need to find out the facts. But there's a limit, folks, to where you can be overwhelmed. And, and this is what I'm seeing from different ones who are, are sincerely trying, you know, to take a right stance and respond in faith. But with everything that we are bombarded by, uh, it, it will continually keeps things stirred up of anxiety. And let's remember, the enemies of God feed on anxiety, on worry. Negative emotions are powerful in the spirit. They will attract more fear. That's why it's why it's so important. This is the power of our faith. And it's the power of joy. It's the it's the power of positive thinking. This is why uh is it in, in Philippians, you know, don't don't focus on should have the reference. Whatever is excellent, whatever is true, whatever is praiseworthy. Think about those things. That's not just a good practice. That has spiritual power in it, okay? So I'm just throwing you out here some initial thoughts here as, as we kind of get into this because I want to I want to build your faith here that regardless of what happens tomorrow uh, or in subsequent days and months with everything that we're hearing could happen, I want you to be so armed and ready. It doesn't matter what the enemy tries. It doesn't matter. You're fixed. Your faith is steadfast. You know who your God is. You know who you are. This is God's goal. This is the stance that I'm taking, okay? So I'm just sharing for my own journey here what the Lord has been establishing in me and wanting to encourage you in this. You know that I've been talking about Psalm 91. A lot of folks have. I take this literally, okay? And let me remind you what Psalm 91 is. Those who dwell in the presence, you know, the shadow of the Almighty. That, that, that whole first verse, I, I'm, watch my interview with Stacey Whited, Flyover Conservatives, 
It's on my YouTube channel. Uh, no, it's not. I couldn't share it there. It's on Rumble. It's on my Rumble channel. Uh, we talked about this, okay? And and everything is dependent upon this first verse of abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. When we do that, that's when we are under a covenant promise and everything that's listed in Psalm 91, we have because we're in him. I mean, even this morning, I woke up with it again. I, he, the Lord woke me up this morning. His presence was on me, the manifest presence. And I knew he was just reminding me, I'm here. You're covered. You're covered. This is the promise. Psalm 91, three to four, in reference to this uh, possible alert on October 4, that something might be triggered that's dangerous. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. buckler. <laughs> Verses 9 and 10. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. And see, I, I hope you have. Have you? Are you practicing his presence? Are you daily coming to him? Developing this communication with him, learning how to hear his voice, asking him questions, fellowshipping with him. Because if you have the most high who is your refuge, no evil shall be allowed to come near you. No plague will be allowed to come near your tent. This is the posture that I take. This is this is how Bobby and I are dealing with so many of these things. Um, we will do the research. We will look. But in the end, we're under the Lord's protection, okay? I, we're not going to be naive. Uh, and we're not going to deny that things are, are, are happening. But in the end, our faith is firmly fixed in who he is, okay? Now, let me just give you some practical tips as to how I establish my faith and how I have established a track record with God, because this is important. Faith, faith is not some kind of, static theological concept faith is alive and it is ever growing okay but that's up to you as to how you grow it that's why all these circumstances that you're facing the trials and testings they are opportunities to grow to establish and and as i've said recently to enlarge your capacity to receive and to give this is what god's doing this is why he establishes faith he is enlarging our capacity to hold more of him, and more yet to flow in his presence and to be conduits of his glory and his fire and his presence and all the good things. He's enlarging our capacity because of our faith, okay? First and foremost, and I'm going to use here this October 4 alert as an example, we can find out information we can do our research, but when you when we become so preoccupied that we're afraid if we're missing something, if we haven't, you know, gotten all the facts that somehow we're not safe, that's a lie. Okay. There's no way that we can get all the facts. <laughs> no doubt there's going to be news come out next week of something that we didn't know about, you know, that we've been eating or ingesting or it's been thrown in the air. And oh no. I mean, thank God he has known about this. You know, his mercy and his grace are becoming very real. And, and I take great comfort in knowing that he has known all along what we haven't known. <laughs> and he's still been covering us. Okay. James 1 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God, who generously gives to all without reproach. That means he he, he won't try to nitpick of why are you asking this? And it says, it, It'll be given to you. I, I've always believed that verse and I've, I've gotten answers when I have gotten, when I've gone to the Lord and I I've learned to be very specific when I'm questioning something such as, you know, an alert Lord, is there something here that I need to be aware of? Show me, uh, show Bobby, you know, give him a dream that <laughs> this is when we know, okay, the Lord really is speaking because God will give Bobby a dream, not me, but him. Uh, then I know, okay, this is something we need to, to pay attention to because we're always on the alert to whatever God might want to show us. And, and he has done that. Okay. Uh, for example, and this is just the way that the Lord works with me. Okay. Cause you're going to find your own path of how your faith grows. A lot of times when I have dreams, there's symbols and, uh, aspects that I, I don't understand. 
I will always go to the word of God first. But then sometimes there's a symbol or there's something in that dream. Like, what is that? What does that mean? I'll go to Google. A Google of all places. Yes, I know what Google and Apple represent. Okay. But I've just chosen, I'm going to use the enemy's platforms to, to share truth. Okay. I, I do Google searches. And because I asked the Lord, God, show me what, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how many times I'll, I'll Google something when, when I have already asked the Lord specifically. And the first link that comes up is some kind of unknown, you know, hidden little article uh, or piece that when I start reading, it's like right away, oh, bells start going off. That's what I need to hear. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's happened so many times. I've even tested it out. I've gone back later. And I've tried to put in the cert, same search. It doesn't come up. I can't find it. That's why I've learned to save save the links. Uh, that's just one small way that the Lord has worked with me that has built my faith. Now, I'm not saying it works all the time, okay? But I've noted enough to realize God wants me to know. This is the point. God wants us to know what he's doing. He wants us to know what's going to be helpful for us. What's going to help build our faith? What's going to draw us closer to his heart? He wants us to know that. Sometimes we're not being specific enough. Sometimes we're asking the wrong questions. If you wonder why God's not speaking to you, it could be you're asking the wrong question. Lord, help me and adjust. Am I even looking? Maybe I shouldn't even be asking this question. I mean, for example, is this alert a serious threat that I need to be listening to? Well, maybe I should be asking, God, what are you teaching us? what's your purpose in all of this? You might want to consider just what you're asking God and, and why. Um, so be specific and ask questions when, when we're not sure about things. He knows, you know, your mode of operation. Uh, you know, it, if you're online a lot, you know, maybe you'll, you'll start seeing these articles come, uh, you know, across your feed or, uh, or conversations and talking with people, or even just driving along the road, all of a sudden you'll see a bumper sticker or a road sign. God speaks in so many different ways. Be alert. He will give you those hints and those clues to let you know, I'm hearing you. I want to respond to you. And I'm going to lead you on this path of discovery. Now I need to say, it is a path of discovery because see, he loves the relationship. And this, this is part of the angst, but yet part of the reality is that he doesn't always just flat out, okay, this is the answer. This is why dreams can be so evasive, and yet they are bait from heaven. It's a constant invitation from the Lord. Let's talk about it. Come on. This is going to be fun. Let's, let's do this discovery together, okay? So you just kind of have to embrace that process and, and thank the Lord for it. So then, for me, it's establishing a track record with God as I have learned how to ask him questions about what's true, what's not. Give me the information that's going to be helpful for me because, I'll just say this yet, when I have asked and, and I've started to go on a search and I, it's just like nothing is coming up and it's nothing is, is working, I take note of that and I've learned that after a point, it's like the Holy Spirit is saying, you're wasting your time. That you, and, and then I have to go back. Okay, maybe I'm looking for the wrong thing. Or maybe I'm asking the wrong question. Or maybe I just, maybe it's not even important. Sometimes he's, I, I, I know that's what he's been saying. Don't worry about that, Wanda. You don't need to know. Or right? that's not what I'm doing right now. Okay, that doesn't need to be your focus right now. I pay attention uh, because I've learned that the enemy would love nothing more than for me to spend a lot of time spinning my wheels, worrying about what he's doing, and then totally missing what God is doing. So as I have learned in, in my own faith journey, and this is, this is things that both Bobby and I have learned, um, I'll give you an example of how, uh, how important it is to apply our faith specifically and what that looks like in different situations, because when I'm talking about applying your faith, see, Jesus is always looking for faith. If, if you remember, it, look through the New Testament. How many times did Jesus heal someone and he would say, according to your faith, based upon your faith, you know, you're made well. 
faith is what pleases the Lord because it's, it's an exercise of our trust in him. And it is an action. Faith on our part is when we are, we take action through our words and our actions, how we trust him and, and that we're confident. I know this is who you are, God. Okay. And we, we, we test it out. Right. And you'll know that you hit the mark when you see his faithfulness, that he's covered you. He's provided for you. Build on that, but don't expect for it to always look the same because as you grow in your faith, he may be, you know, asking you to stretch in different ways, but it's always to enlarge your capacity. Okay. in knowing who he is and how much he, he wants to, to give to us and how much he is able to not only protect us, but to provide for us. Okay. So this is where you have to look at what kind of track record do you have with the Lord in exercising your faith? Start there, start there. You need to have a confidence because that's what a faith is. It's a confidence. And you've heard from him. You are fully persuaded and it gives you peace. That's when you know that you're responding in faith. When you have a peace and a confidence, the Lord's in this. So that might, might, might look different in terms of, of your response. Again, as we hear about these alerts and the threats to different things, let's not default to being on the defense. God has called us to be on the offense. It's our faith that overcomes. That's what gives us victory is our faith, our trust in the Lord. Because, you know, regardless of, for example, the, the alert of what might go through our electronic devices. I mean, this has been a threat for a long time anyway, in terms of, I mean, radiation, all kinds of things that we're now just waking up to just how bad they are. I mean, even to how we brush our teeth, you know, uh, we have to stay on the offense knowing ultimately God's got us. Our trust is in him because there's only a certain degree of information that we can get and practices that we can change to try to keep ourselves safe. I mean, thank God he knows more than I do. And I'm, I'm going to trust him. I stay alert to him. But my faith is in him and his ability to guard and to protect. And even in terms of any alert, uh, that he'll thwart the alert. You know, he'll, he'll thwart the, any, you know, possible attack. It won't even happen. It'll be a non-event because we've stood in faith. Could that be the power of our faith that even what the enemy tries to do, it ain't going to happen because the people of faith have taken a stand and say, no, I'm not giving into that. I, I am not under your rule. I'm not going to receive that. I mean, again, you know, you apply, you live in Psalm 91, you receive God's protection and you know who we are uh, and that all of these factors, and, and this is, this is the stance that I am coming to more and more. And, and I'm going to talk about health a little bit here. Okay. Uh, because of all the health threats that have come against us and that will continue to come against us is I take a stand in who God created me to be, how he created you and I uh, with a healthy DNA and that we are supposed to live in harmony with nature, not at war with it. And I have to stand there and say, I, I am standing in who God created me to be. There's a lot of sin happening around me. There are bad choices being made. Some uh, on purpose, some out of ignorance. But regardless, I can still stand in absolute faith. God's got me covered and I don't have to bear the consequences of those negative actions. This is God's protection. It's his provision. And I believe that it is according to our faith. Ephesians 6.16, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. And that word faith means conviction. You have a conviction of what God has shown you. You are fully persuaded. And it says, take up that shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And in this case, for that, you know, an October 4 or any other kind of, you know, pulse waves that might go out. Hey, our shield of faith is protecting us from whatever is coming our way. I'm not going to, I'm not under that. I'm not going to waste my time worrying about an enemy that has no power over me. He has no power over me. And I hope that you can say that as well. The enemy is going to do what he's going to do. The enemies of God, they're, they're going to try their playbook. They're going to try all these plays and schemes. 
But let's not forget the power of our faith, the power of our choice to not react in fear and not to waste our time and in negative emotions only to feed him. No, let's determine we are living under the shadow of the most high God. We are being protected when we are in covenant relationship with him, when we are practicing his presence daily, when we are in fellowship with other believers, that we're in agreement about that. This has power in the spirit, people. So, you know, we need to encourage each other when these things come up in how we talk about them, how we respond to them, and give yourself some credit that God can speak to you. He will show you, you know, what you need. And, and the other thing, another thing about this is that in any kind of warning, uh, and especially for prophets, you know, who, who give warnings, I've always been very mindful. If this really is a word from the Lord, any warning that he gives will always have a lifeline of hope. He doesn't give us warnings without any recourse of what to do or how, how to get to the other side. Uh, when I have gotten what I know are legitimate warnings from the Lord, there's always a lifeline that he gives. He says, but this is the way through. This is what I provided. This is what you're going to gain. You know, this is what I'm doing. That's when I know, okay, because that builds our faith. It establishes that conviction. We will not fear the evil. And so I'm saying that because I would urge you to be careful when you listen to different people, even good hearted people who are trying to share information, uh, just guard your heart that you don't fall into a trap of getting all worked up. Okay. Because maybe they are worried. They're anxious. Um, certainly there are those that the Lord has called, you know, as whistleblowers to, to bring attention to different things. And I mean, they're passionate about it. But my point is, let's always look for the lifeline. Let's always look for what God is saying ab about this and what he is taking us through and what we are gaining through it. Because that's always his purpose. Whenever these things come, we are gaining ground by our response to all of these things. Okay? So I hope you catch my heart, if nothing else, okay, in the determination of knowing who God is and, and who we are. This is, you know, I, I feel like I, I had a breakthrough week. I had a wonderful weekend in Florida this last weekend um, doing some ministry and came back and really settled some things, you know, with the Lord and knowing who he is and coming to the point of, you know, I'm not going to stay in, in the past. I'm not going to stay stuck. I'm not going to keep wondering uh, or wasting my time. Oh, you know, what should I be doing to fix this? My faith is in who he is. He is the victor. He is my healer. He is our savior. He is an abundant provider. He is the perfect protector. And he is bringing us into days of incredible things. I've always said this, and, and I believe it. Shouldn't be surprised when the enemy tries to come and to distract us and to get us to fear and to worry. God is using all of this to bring us through as a people. And he wants to use you, even in your home, in your family, in your community, to be a beacon of hope, to be one who operates in faith and that you have a confidence, okay? And that what you do, you know, you've heard from the Lord. You know, this is the word of God. This is what I'm standing on, both the written word of God and the rhema word of the spirit that he brings to your heart that just settles it. Yes, God, you've got me. So I hope you can take courage in that. Leave your comments below. Leave your, you know, maybe there's a scripture verse that the Lord has given you that's really encouraged you. Hey, recently, go ahead and share that um, because we need to build faith. This is really what I would love for your comments to reflect is how to build faith within one another. Even in sharing, you know, links and information, whatever, it should always be done to empower and equip one another to see how big God is, not to see how big the enemy is but to see how big God is. I want to magnify the Lord. I, I'm, I'm tired of magnifying the works of darkness. Yeah, that, I mean, we need to be aware. Expose them. Yes, call them out. Yes, but I'm not going to dwell on them. I'm dwelling on the goodness of God, uh, on, the, on the glory of God that is being revealed. Okay, so, hey, uh, for those of you who happened to see this before uh, this weekend, Bobby and I are going to be in St. Michael's, Maryland this weekend for a a day-long 
uh, conference on speaking to community leaders, prophetic intercessors about community transformation. I'll put the link below. If you're around, it's free. You can come and join the conversation. We're looking forward to it. Uh, subscribe to WandaAlger.me, uh, where I've got tons of resources. The, the resources tab, you, you open that link and there's a bunch of links there and uh, PDF downloads and articles that I know will encourage you. I've got a weekly newsletter that I always put out uh, with the latest uh, words and videos and resources. Subscribe to these video channels, comment and share, please, uh, that we can be a community of faith that encourages one another. We'll see what happens. I know God's going to be glorified. Amen.